Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Jake the Genealogist and in today's video I'm going to be going over the family tree of the Crimean Khanate. Now the Crimean Khanate was a Turkic state established on the northern part of the peninsula of the Crimea right here as you can see on this map and it was kind of established after the Golden Horde Empire which was kind of like the successor state to the Mongol Empire's collapsed. Um, and it also ended up being the longest lasting of all these Turkic Khanates kind of spread across Central Asia and Russia. Now, this Khanate was established in 1441 by Haji Gure, right here, a Crimean Tatar who claimed descent from Jochi, who was the eldest son of Genghis Khan. And with the support of the Lithuanian king and the principality of Fyodoro, which was actually located in the southern part of Crimea, Gure was actually able to take Crimea, and uh, much of his reign was spent conquering even more territory for Crimea, and he reigned for a pretty respectable 25 years, with only a few months not ruling when his son, Hader, right here, possibly took over. Now... After dying at the age of 69, his son, Nur Devlet, took over. Now, Nur Devlet only ruled for like a year, but then he was expelled by his brother Mangli, right here. But then he ruled for under the year, and then Nur Devlet took the throne until Mangli took the throne again two years later, and then Mangli lasted for another six years before Nur Devlet was installed again by the Turks for the throne. This time for three years before being overthrown by his brother Mangli again, and um, and the Turks, this time finally for good. So as you can tell, it was a pretty unstable climate for the Crimean Khanate. Lots of short reigns, lots of rivalries between siblings and cousins, and nephews and uncles and all sorts. Now, um, Nur Devlet actually somehow... <laughs> gets the opportunity to rule again, but this time not for the Crimean Khanate, this time for the Kassim Khanate, a neighboring Khanate under Russian influence, whose last ruler had no heirs. And his two sons right here followed him in turn, but then that line died out. But moving back to Crimea, so Mangli, after finally establishing himself, had a pretty nice long reign, and he allied himself with Ivan III, Grand Duke of Moscow to take down Ahmad Khan, the very last ruler of the Golden Horde, and they succeeded in 1502. And interestingly enough, he used Genoese mercenaries to fight these wars, given that there were actually quite a few Genoese trading cities located on the border between Crimea and Fyodoro. And um, on top of this, also his wife, Nur Sultan, right here, the previous wives of several Khans of the neighboring Khanate of Kazan, right here, also exerted a great deal of political power in Crimea, being one of the few women to do so. Now, Mangli died in 1515, and he was succeeded by his eldest son, Mehmed I. Now, Mehmed managed to start conquering many of the other Khanates of um, the region, and he placed his brother the future Khan Saib the first right here on the throne of the Kazan Khanate right here. And he was also able to take, and uh, Mehmed was also able to take over the Astrakhan Khanate before he was killed eight years into his reign. And he was succeeded by his son, the unpopular Ghazi the first right here. Um, but Ghazi lasted for under a year before he was executed, actually, by his uncle, Sadat I, who became the new Khan. Now, during Sadat's reign, he had to deal with much of the mess from the previous years, while also stopping Islam Gare right here, another of Mehmed's sons, from taking the throne. And he renounced his throne after only eight years, leaving the Khanate to fall into the hands of Islam. However, the Turks, who held basically at this point, a lot of sway over who got to be the next Khan, removed Islam and installed his uncle, Sahib I, um, um, previously the Khan of Kazan, as the next Khan of Crimea. Now, 
Finally, after putting down yet another revolt by Islam, one that ultimately ended in his death in 1537, Sa'ib settled into a relatively steady reign of 19 years. He actually retook Astrakhan, um, and he also raided Moscow and Lithuania, and he decided to send his nephew, the son of his brother who didn't end up ruling, Devlet I Gure, to become the new ruler of the collapsing Kazan Khanate. But unfortunately, um, this power move ultimately backfired, as Devlet said, how about I don't do that, and invaded Crimea and overthrew Saib and killed all of his descendants. Wonderful. Now, Devlet, once he took the throne, once again had a pretty long reign, and um, this was unfortunately not spent gaining territory, but more so losing territory, including Kazan to the Russians, who officially ended the Khanate, and Astrakhan due to a result, or a revolt by the previous leader. Um, and after a reign of 26 years, he died of the plague in 1577. Now, after Devlet's death, the Khanate fell into the usual case of too many short-lived rulers, as you can see. Five of Devlet's children and seven of his grandchildren all became Khan, and none of them really lasted more than 13 years, and they only ruled within an 89-year period. That's an average of about seven years per ruler. Not very much. And most of these Khans made little to no gains territorially, mostly participating in the various Russian and Ottoman wars at the time. A few notable rulers, though, included Selamet, right here, um, who was um, basically the ancestor of essentially all of the um, rest of the Crimean Khans. And also his son, right here, Islam III, who helped the Cossacks during the Khmelnytsky Uprising. And um, moving on, so another, another notable ruler, a uh, great-grandson of Devlet, was um, Bahadir I's son, Salim I, who ruled on four separate occasions. Uh, despite this, though, he actually had the noble support and was generally well-liked, um, and he was, even was a poet and a musician. Um, but from then on out, most of the rulers right here were either incompetent or really didn't accomplish much in their reign. Um, one of these rulers, though, um, Salim II, who is right here, um, actually built the Selim II Garay Fountain, one of Crimea's greatest hydraulic marvels, something that's still used by the citizens of the city of Bakhchisarai. So that's pretty cool, I guess. And another uh, Khan, actually his brother Karim, right here, also commissioned a fountain, this one called the Fountain of Tears, a testament to one of his concubines, a Polish woman named Maria Patoka. And on top of this, he also further expanded the capital city at the time, Bakchisarai, with even more architecture projects. But now, we get to talk about Crimea's downfall. Now, this happened under the Khan Shahin Gure, right here. Um, and unlike many of his warlike ancestors, surprisingly, he focused on modernizing Crimea, even moving the capital to the trading city of Kaffa, and he can also speak four languages. And uh, after a brief uprising by his brother, Bahadir II, right here, that was immediately put down, guess what, the Russians did what they did best and annexed Crimea in 1783 to become part of the empire under Catherine the Great. And Shaheen was executed four years later, thus bringing an end to the Crimean Khanate. There are actually still, though, descendants of this Garay family, and um, most, if not all of them, live in Turkey nowadays. Um, some people in Crimea still, uh, still actually want a return to the monarchy, but uh, saying that it's uh, kind of being contested under Ukrainian and Russian control at the moment, that's not going to happen in the foreseeable future. But that about wraps up this video. Thank you guys for watching, and sorry for my absence from making all these family trees. It's been like a month or two since I've come out with the last one. Um, 
but I'll be back for more soon. Goodbye.